we have our foundation then here of our index.html and traditionally index.html is the very first page of any website. It could be called home, it could be called start page, it could be called anything, but traditionally it's index.html. And so that's where our uh, content layer is, the HTML file. Then we have the CSS which is the presentation layer. We don't have any custom CSS yet. And then the behavior layer, the JS file, we're going to have some custom JavaScript there eventually. And our supporting files, the jQuery and jQuery mobile libraries, as well as a folder of images. And if you take a quick look there, we have the, J the Ajax loader icon. You know, this is a little animated graphic that will spin. If I have a graphics editor, I can change that icon to something else. Then we've got ping and SVG versions of our icons. These are all of the icons built into jQuery 145. I can open these up in an editor, Photoshop, whatever, and then uh, edit these ones so that the icons are, are my own icons. So one, I have two possibilities to make my own icons. I design my own graphics and change the code. Or I just change the icon and don't change the code. Uh, we'll see that that possibility works in a variety of ways. But here then, if I want my own calendar icon, I can open up Photoshop, design my own one, although it's a very small size, uh, and it grows and shrinks as necessary. But all the 50 built-in icons are here. And then SVG versions, which are scalable vector graphics, which are sort of like a, um, Adobe Illustrator versions of the graphics. These are high quality scalable versions that do not lose quality. You can't really use Photoshop unless you've got the latest one. If you've got Photoshop CC 2016, the, like, the most latest one, you will be able to create SVG files easily. If you have anything besides that, Illustrator will be the best app to use. Um, that was in the images folder. That's what we got. That's our setup. If we go back to our code, we had changed our code a little bit. We're going to further refine our code here. Uh, quick overview of our code, then we'll get detailed. We've got a div that defines this whole page. We've got to then fix that, don't we? We're not using divs to define a page. What are we using for data roll page? Section. Section. So we're going to need to change in mine it's line 17 and it goes all the way down to in my case line 106 how do I know that if you click the tag it highlights red to show you its pair so make a note perhaps on mine it's from one it's from line 17 to 106 and I need to change that pair so instead of div data roll page we need section data roll page fix that and go all the way down to where its pair ends and then slash section all the way at the bottom it's no longer slash div before my scripts start now it's slash section while I'm here I notice div data roll footer. What should that be fixed to? I think I heard someone say footer. The footer tag. We have the footer tag that defines a footer element. So instead of the generic div, we want footer. Obviously the project is working as is, but I would recommend to do things the most correct way. And the most correct way is the right tag for the right task. Divs are useful. I'm not saying we're never going to use divs, but I'm saying that divs are not useful enough for our purposes at the moment. The right tag for the right task. I need a tag that defines the footer. I've got a tag for that. A footer. The footer also has some text here in a heading. What did we do when we made our initial jQuery mobile project? Heading 4. We should favor using heading 4 as the last heading uh, down in the footer. And we were going to use heading 2, 
and 3 in the content. If we needed a heading 4 in the content, then I would bump that one up to heading 5. But always have your footer as the highest heading if you have a footer. So I changed line 101, 105. I'm going to back up to the top section data roll page good ID page one that's not going to be very useful for very long I'm gonna have several pages I'm gonna to jump to different screens I'm gonna forget what is page one again what is page three what is page seven we need a meaningful name here so ID equals home we'll have a home screen I see a generic div with a data roll of header so that div pair should be changed over to header. Mine goes from line 18 to 42. If your line numbers are off, don't worry about it, but just make sure you find the pair. So header data roll equals header. And then it's pair slash header. What follows then is, is the top most header, which is set to header 3. That should be set to header 1. It's the top most header element. So change that. And this is going to be, uh, maybe we'll set it now. This is going to be the My SDCE app. This will be the text that appears at the top, which can be anything we want, of course. But for the moment, it's the My SDCE app. Line 22 starts an element of data roll nav bar. We have a tag for that. We have the nav tag. So uh, fix line 22 to be nav slash nav. UL list item, all of that's fine. This is a nav bar. Oh, we also have data icon pass top, so our icon's at the top. That's fine. List items, hrefs, etc. We've got href page one, page one, page one. We need to fix that. Data transition fade, these all have a basic fade transition. No data theme. And then the icons, I'll pick better icons later perhaps, but I'm seeing that. And then the class, which is persisting and active. So for line 25, href pound home, because we have a home button, it's no longer a button called button, it's a button called home. Which then that'll be our art button, our computer button, our pound computer, and our pound art. Art. That's our art screen with art classes. This is our computer screen with our computer classes. I think the fade animation works, so it's a little boring. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, flip. I'm going to have all of these flip. I could have a completely different transition for every one of these. I don't recommend it because that increases friction. 
Remember, we're getting back to that concept of user experience, UX, uh, minimizing friction, which is annoyances. It's going to be weird and annoying that those buttons have a different animation. And this is often something that happens when someone learns a new trick that we want to try all the possibilities or we're very proud of it. So I would not put one as flip and one as flow and one as turn and one as fade. I wouldn't put a different animation. You're going to cause confusion. Why did this transition? Why was this a different transition from screen to screen? Is it a special screen? Maybe I'll have my pop-up turn into view. That's fine because it's a different kind of screen, it's a different kind of concept, whereas simply going from main screen to main screen should have a consistent animation. So I'll use the flip animation. The rest is okay, but maybe I'll put the, the icon of home for the home button. I don't have an actual sort of... Well, I think we have... don't we have an edit? Pencil? Pencil might be good for art. And then for a computer, we have that on and off power button, but that makes me think I'm about to turn my app off. Um, maybe there I'll use gear. Computers have gears, right? They used to. Uh, so any icons will work. I'm going with those icons. Art pencil. And in here I could use this icon, power icon for computer, but I might confuse people into thinking, if I click this, will it turn off the app? Or if I click this, will it turn off my phone? So that might not be the best icon to use. And if there's a different one you found, you can go ahead and use it. So all of that, the nav bar I think is good. Line 43 starts a div of content, which is the older, which is the older um, paradigm, isn't it? We'll we'll fix that in a moment. But the main content area is not div; it is article. So you need to fix your div. When it goes from forty-three to a hundred, it should be article. And we saw that data roll content works, but it's deprecated. It's not the it's not the proper code anymore. So we'll need to remove that whole data roll content and instead simply roll equals main and class equals UI dash content. It's a little bit more verbose, it's a little bit more wordy, but it's more correct also. So heading to, heading, that's fine. We might not know what we're writing there just yet. Um, div data roll collapsible set. This one is an example where we will leave the div as is. There really isn't a, um, a an HTML5 tag that will define this. Um, so we'll leave div. Div will work. Notice data roll collapsible set. So we could have looked this up on jQueryMobile.com. How do I create a collapsible element? And here it is. Kodika did it for us. It's a div data roll collapsible set. Each individual little section is in another div. 
with a data role of collapsible and then a heading of a section header. The actual content that would be visible, just to show this, after heading 3, I could create a paragraph here, and then here, content. I'll deal with that detail a little bit later. But we've got this div collapsible set, and each one is like a drawer that opens up, which is the, a, a, a subsequent div of collapsible. Past, past that, then we get this one's pretty unique. The way that we create this cool divider here is all bullet points. UL, but then it's very specific in that it has a data role of list view. We've got a divider with a data role of list divider. Past the list divider is then just more content like another bullet point, but without any sort of data role, although it has a theme, theme C, we don't have a theme C defined, so it defaults back to A. There's a transition that they added for us. It's not going anywhere at the moment, but those buttons eventually, we're going to click those buttons to look at more content on another screen, and that's going to be pointing to some other section of content, we'll get to that later with a slide transition. For the moment, here's something we haven't looked at yet, data inset true. Hopefully you're curious about these things and, and think, what happens if I put false? So we'll leave it as is, but if you're curious and you change that to false, The element changes now that it's no longer inset. It takes up the whole left to right of the screen. I have to fix up my alignment there a little bit. But now I get this sort of interface element that I've seen in other apps where it stretches across the whole screen. So you can see that with inset true or false. Setting it back to true means yes. Inset it, meaning yes. You know, separate it from the edges. That's the list view element. We don't need to really change anything on that. If you had put in a number counter like I did just to see what it looked like, the number three is defined here with, we've got a list item, it's a button, and then after that is a number and it's in a span with a class of UI list item count. So if I wanted to add a number counter to anything else, I can sort of reverse engineer that I can do something like this. Just take that little block, and if you didn't put it in Kodika, that's okay, but this is how you would do it. Now I have a new number right there. I see. Actually, I need it before the end of my A tag. But that's interesting. If I put it after the A tag, it takes over the, the icon and it puts the number there. So maybe I do want that. And the difference is that the numbers before or after the uh, A tag. Next. Another div class UI grid A. This didn't have a data role. So some things are data roles, some things are classes, which is which. We just know which is which by practice, by looking up the documentation. I believe in, in version 1.5.0, they're making a few things more consistent. Because I don't remember, is it a class this time or a data role? I think they're making it more consistent in version 1.5. But this is a this is just a little grid 
with two rows and two columns. So just to show you this, you don't have to type this, but I'll type row one, call one, row one, column two, row two, column one, and row two, column two. How do I know that? Well, I've done this a few times. But I also, uh, you know, read the documentation, tried it out, and that's what I'm seeing there. So there was an invisible grid there. If you managed to bring in that grid, the code for it is that we create a div, we set a class, we have UI grid A. This is one of these that's like very, very poorly named because this is creating basically a two-row... This is creating a two-row grid, grid A. If I wanted a three-row grid, I would change that to UI grid B. Each particular row is then defined. Wait, I always get it backwards. That's grid A, which means two columns. Yeah, I forget which is which. But I've got these two rows, so if I add one more... Notice we've got block A and block B and then A and B. So if we wanted a third row, we would create a grid B and then add another group of block A, block B, that will subsequently then be the third row. You don't have to do this but I just want to put it here to confirm. That's why, again, using Codica will let me quickly do this. Row 3, call 1, yeah. So if you wanted three rows, that should be grid B, and then you add a new pair. If I wanted a third column, block A, block B, block C. I'm going to take this all back in a moment, but here just to show, now we can do block C. We should have block C for all rows, but I think it'll let us do it that way at least. So here's a way to divide up our interface into three columns, into two columns, etc., multiple rows. This will be a cool grid for icons and such. For the moment, we just need two by two, two rows, two columns. I'm going to take all of that back. I'll leave those words there maybe just to... because if I take out any content, they'll just be invisible. I'll leave something there to tell me I've got some rows and columns. And then we get back down to the footer and then the section ends, and then our final code. So we could have written this all of our all ourselves. We'd, we'd go look it up on jQueryMobile.com. How do you do this? How do you do that? Write the code. Or we use a tool like Codica, Ionic, etc. to create an interface quickly, and then edit it in the code. I want to do one more thing here. There are references to data themes throughout our project. Let's do this. Go all the way to the top of, top of the document and select data theme equals A. And then you have a little um, binoculars icon to find, or you can go to search, find, or control F. Let's bring up the find box. This is a very powerful find box because it lets, lets us find something. Matching the word, matching the case, searching in different ways, normal, with regular expressions. Finding next, finding all, etc. Count. There are two examples of that block of code, data theme A. Data theme equals 
There are eight examples of data theme. So the point of this is I want to remove instances of the theme, of the data theme. This is just going to cause us um, a little problem later on when we want to change to our own unique themes. Um, so not only can we use find to find an element of code, we can also use replace. So if we have our code selected, we've, we've got the binocular to find, and then we've got this replace icon, or search replace. And it's the same box here anyway, find replace. And the trick that we can do here is, I want to remove all instances. There's only two instances of this, but if we had 20, this would work really well. Data-theme equals quote a quote. I want to replace that with nothing empty. So I do replace all. It found two instances of that throughout my code. And so this is somewhat optional, but I want to remove this because I know later on this will get in my way. So I've removed instances of data theme A. I was looking for data theme B, and there are no instances of data theme B. But I did spot some data theme C. So I want to replace data theme C with nothing. So I'll replace that. It should have done three examples. Those were down on my um, those were down on my list items. It removed three examples, or four or so for me. And if I add this up, I just removed <coughs> two and four, that becomes six. I had eight. When I searched data theme equals, I had eight. So there's two, actually, for some reason, that are set to nothing, in my case three that are set to data theme nothing. So those are just kind of wasting some bytes. So with data theme nothing, I will replace that with literally nothing. So now if I go look for anything that is set to data theme, there's no examples. There is a final data divider theme B, which I don't want. Well, like I said earlier, that if we're going to define our own themes, these are sort of being forced into, these sections and widgets are being forced into a particular theme. So if I take those away, I'm a little bit more free to define them how I want a little later. So data divider theme B. I guess in my case there's only one example of it, so I'll delete that. Just to make sure I didn't delete too much. I'm going to go back to this. Notice the difference is this theme divider here was dark, and then now it's light. But again, that's okay. We're going to define our own versions later. And the reason we're deleting instances of A, B, or C is, yes, we can define those later, but it's going to be easier for us later on to just redefine theme A. If they're all set to the default, which is A, or nothing, 
then when we redefine theme A, everything will change consistently. If, I, if, if something is set to C, I have to explicitly create the style of C in addition to creating the style of B and creating the style of A. To save myself effort, they will all be theme A. Okay, so sometimes when I uh, create a project, again, I have an idea of what I'm doing or I don't. We have an idea of what we're doing. We did that little graphic to show we've got this screen, that screen, and this screen. We've got an art screen, computer screen, home screen. And at the moment, via Kodika, I just borrowed all of the pieces that I need, but they're not in the right screen yet. We need an art screen and a computer screen, screen and a home screen, and so forth. So based on the code we've got here already, we want to create an art screen and a computer screen. And I've taught this class a few years now, and this always a little bumpy sometimes, but the way I'll do this is I'm going to make a copy of the complete section and paste it two more times. I then have to change the details of each of those sections. We did that on Tuesday. And so I'm going to need to change the IDs so that all three sections have the IDs that I expect. And then only leave the content that I expect in each section. Based on my example, I don't need the collapsible element in the home screen. I need it in the art screen. <coughs> and I need this divider element in the computer section. So I'm going to select the comment as well, line 16 all the way down to 116, so 100 lines. I'm going to select 100 lines from 16 to 116. I'm going to copy the whole thing. It's too much, but it might be the easiest way. And after 116, I'm going to paste that whole chunk. And I've doubled the size of my project because I've got a whole new section. The home section just ended, and the brand new section will start here. These comments then are going to be very important for us to have. These comments are very important for us to have so that at a glance we can tell out of my 500 lines of code what section am I in. So what I will do here actually is <coughs> home end part section start. So what follows on the next hundred lines is a new section, which is a data roll page, and an ID of art. I could change that heading furthermore to show that this is the art. These are the art classes. The nav bar now is starting to be more functional because originally I had a lead to an art section and now the section exists. But what I should do here is fix my highlighted button. Back on the home section, the home button was highlighted because it had this class. Now I'm going to need that class for the art button. Uh, the only trick here is I need to move this class, I need to move or cut and paste this class to the same place, like on art. But the, the little trick here always is, be careful what you're moving. I moved class so that art gets highlighted, but I forgot to put it inside as an attribute of the A tag. 
I left the angle bracket up there. So oftentimes what happens here is, okay, people think, I'm going to cut that whole line right there. And then I'm going to paste it right here. The, the wrong color should tell you you did something wrong. I took too much. I took the closing angle bracket of the A tag up there, and then I put an extra one, but there's already one here. This uh, A tag. So the most correct way to do this is that if I bring down that angle bracket to the next line, and then only cut the class, not the angle bracket, and paste it right there, that's what will work. So don't put another angle bracket here without it being the one we borrowed from up here. There should not be another angle bracket up there. It's brought down here and then the class. We'll do something like that when we get over to the computer screen. Before we go further, check your code to make sure nothing broke. So if I save what I have so far, I'm on the home screen, that should be as is. If I go to the art screen, now there's an art screen that says art classes. The button is highlighted because I moved the class over, everything else looks the same. And then if I press home, it goes to home. So art and home should work. Computers doesn't, because there's no computer section yet. Content, heading, that's fine. Collapsible. Okay, in the art screen is where I will have the collapsible element. I don't need then the list view element. So remove that completely from your art screen. From mine, it goes from line 170 to 198. I may use that div at some point. So I'll leave that I'll leave that alone. All I want then in the art screen, the heading, the collapsible element, the grid, footer. I know that I, I've got a grid down to that down there so Maybe I'll remove the text there to turn it invisible again, but I know that I've got a grid there that I can use in the future. So I'll need to do something similar to a new section, uh, computer's section. So uh, I'll copy my home section, that's the one that's still intact. I'll go back to copy my whole chunk of the home section.
and paste it right after this last section. Put my comments here. This was um, art section end. Computers section start. This is a brand new section. It needs a brand new ID. Computers. Again, whatever we've called this href on computer. I call it computer, not computers. Computer ID. Keep that consistent. And then something in the heading to say computer classes. And then we'll change that class for the for the buttons again. Same as before, I need to move the class out of home and down to computer. You'll need to do the same thing that you don't either add an extra or take away the uh, angle bracket. In the computers section, I don't need the collapsible set. So that did, we will remove and we'll keep the, the list view element. Home screen, art screen only has my collapsible, and computer screen only has my dividers. Once you've got all of those sections, then we can simplify our home screen. Our home screen has the two widgets that we don't need there. Uh, we'll leave the rows, we'll leave the grid. So I'll go back up to my home section. Oh, and then my comment here, this is the uh, Computers section end. <clears throat> so on my home section, I will remove the collapsible and the list view. I'll leave the grid. But I'll just remove the content so that it's invisible.
we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Uh, one of the things that we could have done as we were setting ourselves up here is we've left all of the screens down there, all of the footers, saying uh, footer. We could have different messages on every screen, sure. Let's say we wanted to put the same message, like a copyright notice, on all three screens. And at the moment, there's just three sections to edit, three footers to edit, not so complicated. But if we had 30 or more complexity, we would have to have some algorithm to change all of those footers quickly. This will give us another little bit of practice with the find and replace feature of uh, Notepad++. So notice we have, um, in my case, line 63, I've got the word footer that I want to replace. And instead, I would want to put a copyright notice. The problem, of course, is that there are 12 instances of the word footer throughout my code, such as the footer tag and the footer data role. Well, if I'm saying perhaps match case, this finds the three instances only of where I wrote the word footer capital letters. That'll skip anywhere else footer is, is written. So we will see that the find and replace can be pretty complex. So I'm going to find and replace footer, make sure match case is turned on, and we'll change that to say copyright and copy 2016. Apps.biz. And then replace all. of that was to change the footers, but they say something else. Well, and then here's the content that, uh, that I wrote inside of the sections. This content, in there it can go text, graphics, video, anything we want even collapsible elements, incollapsible elements. The uh, home page is looking a little sparse. We'll work on that in a little bit. And so we're starting to develop this structure. Uh, we used Kodika to help get us started. It didn't do it all for us. And the paid version of it will let you do more. The paid version of it will let us create these sections a lot faster, maybe a lot easier. But uh, you get what you pay for, and we didn't pay anything, so we got a pretty good result. We just had to fine-tune some elements, and now here's our starting point for it to be subsequent future projects. We'll take one more break, and then uh, we'll start to add uh, more elements and content to start to bring this project together based on the example project. So if you don't have it quite at this point, Call me over during the break. It's about 8.20. We'll be back at 8.30, uh, and we'll go on.